Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week we're in Brazelton, Georgia, to check out a couple of the radical rides from the Year One collection. These guys have been leaders in the whole resto mod trend pretty much from the beginning, and they really build some cool cars. The ones we got today are good examples of where that trend is and where it might just be heading. See what you think. Well, Keith, it looks like you dug into the Year One toy box and came up with a couple little things to play with today. Nice ones, too. Well, thank you. It's, it's not often we get such a special guest from down to our neck of the woods, so we thought we'd drag a couple of these old clunkers out. Yeah, so well, I really do appreciate that. Man, I, you guys do build the coolest things uh, in the world, and, you, and, and really, you've, uh, you've led the resto mod trend for, for a long time. And you, and you continue to, I think, evolve that trend. And I, I think this 56 is the perfect example of that. We noticed one of the things that a lot of people do is they really modernize the cars, mm -hmm. you know. They shave the trim, they don't have nearly as much chrome on them, they change the interiors completely. Really thought, extreme, like real right, trick interiors. Yeah. Right, and we thought, well, you know, let, let's go back a little bit and, and let's, we really like the basic form of the car so much. You know, the designers did it. There's a reason these cars are classic, <laughs> right? <laughs> they're they're so, ultra cool. Yeah, let, let's, let's kind of enhance that or, or leave that as the designer intended. But then, of course, since all of our cars get driven and typically pretty hard, you know, <laughs> we'll modernize all the running Gear and everything underneath the skin of the car. But it really works. And then the interior, here again, I mean, this is, you talk about a throwback. I mean, bench seat, period fabric. Yeah, the, again, you know, the idea is is keep it uh, as cool as it was, you know, and cool yeah. as it has been all these years. And another big area of modifications for these cars always has been the interior. They've all seemingly got bucket seats and mm. homemade consoles and people change the dashes considerably. In a car like this, you know, that you're actually gonna drive and use, we thought it would be really neat to combine some of that resto flavor. You, you updated the gauge package a little bit, right. you know, obviously, but left it in the, in the original uh, opening. It threw in a, some decent tunes. Oh yeah, yeah, gotta have tunes, gotta have ACs, gotta, gotta have an AC right, system. Right, right. I mean, you know, we're not uncivilized. <laughs> not, we're not cavemen here. Right. Any other tricks that, uh, that, that I should know about here? Well, we've got a kind of a cool little thing going on in the trunk well, here. Let's have a Let me show you. You know where the spare tires typically live in these cars you know the, the, the little spare tire well we, we do have a spare tire there but inside that spare tire instead of air is all the subwoofer for the stereo <laughs> system so thought that was kind of cool I, it's a great idea actually you know you, you better not have a flat but what, what a cool way to deal with a subwoofer if, if you do have a flat at least you can sit and jam to the tunes while, we, uh, <laughs> wait, while wait, the wait, guy's wait. coming to get you right <laughs> for triple a <laughs> <laughs> well now uh, and under the hood i'm sure you know you've you've, you've done that voodoo you do the, the voodoo we do, right? Yes. yes. And uh, let's go look at that. So what tricks we got up here? Well, again, you know, we, we like to drive our cars, so we wanted to make sure that when it came time to drive it, you know, it, it had plenty of power and everything like that. We are in the performance car business indeed, after Indeed, indeed. This is actually an LS2 crate engine from GM Performance Parts. It's one mm -hmm. of the very first ones they ever, they ever um, assembled and, and sent to us. What we've done is we've actually carbureted this engine. Yeah. Um, and dressed everything in sort of an old school hot rod vibe. Now, the cool thing about this engine is it makes 450 horsepower. Wow. Uh, it, it's very lightweight, you know, compact. It's all the good things about a modern type power plant that you get, you know, such as power production and packaging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you dress it up to look like a cool old 56 small block and stick it in there and it does a great job. They're rolling labs for you. They are really? rolling labs. It's rolling uh, R&D and that's what we tell everybody. You know? oh, yeah, it, but it, really, it's just cool. It's just know? cool. Right. I mean, you're <laughs> car guys. What are you yeah, going to do? Right. Well, you know, car guys usually drive their cars. We do drive the cars. So what do you uh, say we drive this car? I think it's a fine idea. What do you say I drive this car? I think it's an even better idea. You know, I think it's marvelous. Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Uh, you know the the two frame chassis, modern suspension. You know, good coilover shocks and everything. All, all that stuff makes a, a sweet riding, sweet handling automobile. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, I wonder why they didn't do that back in '56. <laughs> <laughs> and nice rumble to the engine too. 
The engine makes good power, it's got a good exhaust note, sounds like a 56 auto sound, really. Your, your brain is saying 56 Chevy, but then your butt, you know, is saying, <laughs> you know, not 56 Chevy, exactly. I mean, late model something. Exactly. Yeah. But I like that it's got all the trim, all the chrome, you know, all the all the original designer touches that 56 would have had. It's the, the things that made the 56 cool to start with, you know, and I, I think the, you know, I mean, you could see why the trends were such as they were, you know, as things get older, they get a little bit more appealing, it seems like, and, uh, you know, for all these years, people have been changing the dashes, changing the seats, changing everything to, to make Tri-5 Chevys more modern. And now I think they're old enough to where we'll see it start to go the other way a little bit, you know. And there you people, go. People, Gee, it was pretty good to begin with. Right. <laughs> and kind of revel in the, uh, you know, in the nostalgia of it. This thing would be a blast on a track, I'll bet. Well, you know, I don't think we've actually had it at Road Atlanta yet. It wasn't it's done just in down time. the road. Yeah. <laughs> so, think we can sneak in? We might be able to. I, it'll do well. I mean, the, the chassis is, is such that it should do well. Uh, again, you're... We're gonna have to Velcro us some of the Velcro us in, I guess, to keep us from sliding around. But it's funny if you put this chassis under, you know, uh, say a '69 Camaro, you know, you would have an instantly extremely sporty, capable yeah. car. You know, the fact that it's under a '56, you know, makes it more of a cruiser, but no less capable. Two days after it was finished, it was on the the power tour, wow. know, like a little 3,000 mile break-in trip. Yeah, nice shakedown. Man. Yeah, and, and fortunately, man, it was just. Whew, you know, a couple little details, but as far as the basic running down the road part, it's good to go. Man, when you can drive a 56 Chev that drives like this, I mean, this is a dream. It's just a joy. I think, you know, the heart of the, the whole Resto Mod thing, you know, is to have the, the cool vintage look, but, you know, the dynamics and the behavior of a modern vehicle. You have the ability to cruise along at, at you know 60 70 miles an hour with the tunes and the air conditioning and you know got the cruise set wrapped in a 56 shell what's not the like well you know and most cars that look like this on the inside are going to drive like a 56 on the outside right you know? <laughs> right and what's so cool about this is you, you you gave me that 56 look you gave me that you know the nostalgia retro the way it was the way the designers intended it look but man, it's just, it's, it's driving a dream. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, you know, I've never driven a 56 quite like that. That is one sweet 56. <laughs> it's, it's a nice little 56. It is a nice little 56. And this is a nice big 69. 69 Roadrunner. Yeah, it's not small, is it? Uh-uh. Yeah, now these, a... you know, these are big cars. They are. And you know some people really like this body style and some people like it less but man what you guys have done to this car and to lower it a little bit it's a lot of attention everywhere we take it you know and and you know for a couple of reasons i mean a b-body mopar that's that's like essential muscle car yes yes you know b-bodies are but then when you get into convertibles it's a little bit different you know convertibles you know are really more cruisers than mm -hmm. they are hardcore muscle cars this is kind of our schizophrenic muscle. You know, it doesn't know what it wants to be when it grows up. It's it's a B body with a 505 inch engine, right, and a four speed, actually a five speed now. Yeah, but yeah, right. it's a convertible. You know, so I mean, it's it's uh, got a lot going on. Right, right, a lot going on, and it's real subtle. You know, we tried to take a subtle tack with it, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, right, like you always do, right. <laughs> right. But uh, it it really does change the I think the personality of this car when you dropped it down. You know, we have three presets and, and run down the road mode, which is what you see right here is preset number two, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, the actual parking lot look cool mode is one and that slams it on the ground. And then if you know, like we have a big ramp at work we have to get over, so we have to jack it all the way up. It looks like a four wheel drive. Well, probably more like a stock B body mobile. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> like they, they, anyway. the original stance. Right. But man, now, now here you've done, you know, the radical design on the interior and everything, but. But it all works. It all works together. Yeah, mixture of old and new again. You know, the schizophrenic car for us. Um, you know, it's got new touches, but then it's got old seats and stuff in it. You yeah. know, I mean, that's the thing. We we had to make these rear panels and the speakers and did a lot of work on the dash, put a late style steering wheel on it. I'm seeing the number is 505 here. Talk to me about a 505. Well, when we start talking about what we're taught to do engine wise, you know, if it's a if it's a B body Roadrunner, it has to be a big block at least. So, oh yeah. So what we've done is actually taken a 440 and put a stroker crank in it, and that Hence makes the it 505, 505, huh? mm -hmm. 505 inches. 
Uh, another cool thing that we did, we thought we would play around a little bit with some fuel injection. Uh, so it's actually got three two barrel throttle bodies on it with port fuel injection. So it's still a six pack car, uh, hence the hood, but it's fuel injected six pack. So hiding under that uh, unassuming air cleaner. Right, right. That, that small, subtle air cleaner yeah. <laughs> is, is a state of the art, you know, billet aluminum throttle bodies. It, it's pretty neat. Wow. So, you know, and, and then of course we've gone with the the orange uh, air cleaner and, and valve covers against the red engine bay. This is Mopar. Yeah, this is Mopar. And then, you know, some things you don't change. Resto mod stuff, you do change a few things. But, you know, why would you change this stuff? This is the identity of the car. The overall vibe is 69 Road. Yeah. Right? It's a really good cruising car. I mean, if you need to get from here to, say, California in a hurry, this is a really good car to take. Well, maybe not California, but let's take it out cruising anyway. What do you say? Let's go. All right. Welcome back to My Classic Car. This, this car, you know, one of the cool things about this car is there are some modern touches to it, suspension-wise and everything, but there's a whole lot of big block B-body Mopar left in this car. Oh, yeah. sound and what a feel on that shifter too. This car is good and juvenile, you know, and it's loud <laughs> and, you know, it's bright red. It makes a lot of racket. Yeah, yeah. it's cammed up. Mechanically, uh, the car is pretty well sorted. I mean, any muscle car is going to eat parts, you know, so we've had to put a couple clutches in the car. And, you know, we let TV hosts drive it, so well, that, 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 that'll that'll kill the clutch I mean, that right there. Yeah. Heartbeat, man. Yeah. I ordered two more just before we get <laughs> Just for today. <laughs> and it sounds like a Roadrunner. It does. Now it really sounds like a roadrunner. <laughs> now I would imagine when this thing's out on the road or like on the power tour or whatever, it probably gets a heck of a lot of attention. It does, yeah. It's uh, it's not subtle, you no. know. It's uh, what do the car guys think of it? I mean, do they they like what you've done? You know, you get the the Mopar camp is uh, pretty evenly split. It looks like between traditionalists and hot rodders. Hot rodders really dig it. Some of the traditionalists are like. You know, it's a, it's a Roadrunner convertible. What'd you do all that stuff for? It'd be cool <laughs> if you just left a, uh, a stock Roadrunner convertible. But like you say, I mean, you can do that. You can put it all back anytime you want. Right, right, Because yeah. of the way you did this conversion. But you know, one of the things that makes Mopars good to restore is they, they're valuable, you know? I mean, they yeah. hold their value really well, so. You know, not a lot of sick people around like us that would take what is a fairly <laughs> valuable car to start with and cartoon it up even more. I mean, a Roadrunner is pretty cartoony to start with. Right, right off the bat. You're right. We, we got a really cartoony now. I like how you did the graphics on this car too, though. The, 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 that subtle, almost ghosted. Yeah, you know, was, five, that's nice. We, we, we talked about that, and uh, the, that car has such big flanks on it, you know, that we uh -huh. needed something. And you know, it's already a rag top, so it makes the car look longer anyway. There's no roof there from the top down. So if we did a Roadrunner stripe, like a lot of the cars had, you know, just a yeah. thin stripe down the side, then that made it look even longer. <laughs> so we, we kind of played off the e-body billboard scheme a little bit, you know, and came up with some, you know, relatively small billboards for a b-body. Mm -hmm. It is kind of hard to behave yourself with this car, though, right? Yeah, and it's, it's uh, unfortunately, it's a bit of a cop magnet, so. <laughs> Gee, a big red uh, convertible with, uh, you know, a hood scoop and a Bible body. I can't imagine why that would be. Yeah, hard to believe. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, it is, huh? You, you will get the attention of the local law enforcement sometimes. I have been pulled over in this car, I have to admit. But you can usually just show them the car pretty good and talk about it, and they'll say, all right, Drive like a sane person now, you know, be on your way. Yeah. Right. Keep up the good work. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh man, now this was fun. These year one cars are completely awesome, and these guys are always building something. I gotta believe we can come back in a while and do a couple more. That work for you, Keith? That works perfectly with us. Works for me, too.